All right, so what happened was I was out walking around the yard looking at plants, and I saw a bee that I actually thought was like, took its last sip of nectar. So I went to like touch the bee to see if it was dead. Of course it was, but it moved. And then that's when I realized there was actually a bug on the plant that had killed the bee. So I was trying to figure out what this bug was. But this time of year, there are a lot of bee killers, and that's kind of what this video is about. So after this little section with this bug, I'll show you some other things that you have to watch out for. And I'll also go ahead and show you some more of the... Um, seedling tray watering system that I have set up for bees and how well it works in these 90 plus degree days. There's kind of a funny story about this, and I'm getting ready to get into that in just a minute, so make sure you stick around for it. Another bee killer. Long story about this spider. <laughs> Originally, he had his his web was about eight inches in front of the entrance of this hive, and I knocked it down because that's kind of cheating. So then, what I did. All the pollen they're bringing in, orange and yellow. Let's see if we can see some more being brought in. But anyways, what I did was some yellow. Anyways, what I did was I knocked his web down because like literally it was eight inches in front of this. There's some more yellow. Eight inches in front of this hive. And literally a bee couldn't fly into that hive without going through his web. And I was like, that's cheating. So he had it strung from like, there's a fence right here, from this fence over to that other hive that's not being used right now. There was some orange that just went in. There's some more orange. So anyways, I knocked it down and now he's built it between these two posts. And see, that's not right in the path of a beehive. So this is kind of one of those things where i just let nature take its course like the bees will either learn to not fly through this nest over here or they'll fly through there and get caught just like that one did and uh that's kind of how i deal with things you know i let nature be nature but when you're cheating <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna make it a little more to the benefit of the bees like there was, <laughs> I mean, if I was a spider, that's exactly where I'd build it at too. I'd build it right across there so a bee couldn't get into the hive. And even though that, you know, they, they knew that nest was there. So what they were having to do, they were having to fly in and then fly up over the nest and drop down. I mean, they figured it out. They're smart enough to do that. But he did have two or three bees in there. And I was like, nope. I mean, two or three bees he could kill two or three bees every day and not affect a strong bee colony <laughs> all that pollen coming in 
I tell you, we got another uh, honey flow going on. It's not a strong one yet, but maybe we get some rain, it probably will be. A lot of people don't realize you can have blooms everywhere, but if you don't have moisture, <laughs> you don't really have a nectar flow. So they're calling for rain in, I don't know, midweek toward the end of the week. And hopefully it's enough to get things going. I've got, uh, this is the hive that I was from a swarm. Originally it was one wear box and I put them in a Langstroth because I already had Langstroth frames drawn out. Or I put them in there to draw out the Langstroth frames. They drew out that box in probably less than a week. I've got my wear to Langstroth hive adapter on there. My idea was that before winter, they would build out enough of the bottom to where I could remove the Langstroth hive, but it don't look like that's going to happen. So the Langstroth's probably going to have to stay on there over winter. And then what I'll do is hopefully get it off next year. Um, but I went ahead and stuck a second wear deep on there with this honey flow. The top is just plumb full. And uh, I'm kind of hoping they get more of that second wear hive built out. Because then, once I have three boxes on this hive, it'll be really easy to remove that Langstroth. Whereas, if I removed it with only one wear box, it'd be a little tight over winter. So, just waiting to see what happens. Depends on the honey flow. If we get a really good strong honey flow... Chances are that those two wear hives will be built out all the way and plumb full of honey. And uh, I can take the Langstroth off. The other hives are all doing good. They're all double deeps with uh, a super on. My long hives, my test hives are doing really good. And the hives in the front yard are doing really good this year too. So I'm just hoping for a really good fall honey flow which we don't usually our honey flow in Kentucky northern Kentucky where I'm at is usually just enough to get the bees through winter sometimes you'll have excess sometimes you won't you just never know so kind of hoping for a strong strong honey flow if it's anything like spring it'll be rocking and rolling here in about another week or two that's what I'm hoping for I'm hoping for a rocking and rolling year because we don't get those very often. Anyways, thanks for watching. I will go ahead and end this out. You heard me mention that it takes water to have a strong honey flow. But look at all these bees in this. They're just all over these all day long, all the way around the property. I've done numerous videos on this already. And as the day goes on and gets hotter, there will be more and more and more bees. There will be hundreds of bees in here. And there's other bugs besides bees that have knows where this water's at too. I'll leave a link down in the description to kind of go into what these are here for, their purpose, how long I've been using them, where you can get the trays and the inserts, and just a quick overcap. I've got like 20 of these sitting around my property. There's two right here. They're, they're just sitting all over the place. What I do is I feel, you notice that the they're not clear full of soil. There's a reason for that. That keeps 
when we get a heavy rain that keeps the water from running over the sides and running out, I actually want it to capture the water. So I fill them about half full of soil, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. I let whatever weeds want to grow in there grow. And then I take and fill them up in the after the sun goes down, I make sure they've always got water. So if there's like a dry spell where it hasn't rained in a while, I'll bring out, uh, I've got gallon jugs of water. I fill them up so that they're always got water in them. And what happens is, I believe what's really happening is the plants are obviously growing. The weeds, they're weeds. They grow, they bring in the carbon dioxide from the air to create oxygen, right? But there's also, you know, chemical processes that happen in the roots. And the roots are down where the water's at. I don't know if you'll be able to see in between. Yeah, you can kind of see the water in between the trays there. And they're releasing nutrients back into that water. And then the bees will come here to get those nutrients. And they what they do is they suck the water up off the top of the soil. You see there's water on top of that one. Now these other ones don't have water on them, but the soil's wet. So what the bees are doing, they're getting down in there, they're lapping that water up. Then they take that water back to the beehive. That's what they use to cool the beehive down. They basically have their own air conditioning system that's made from water and them fanning their wings. But there's nutrients in that water that the plants are providing. So that makes these very popular all over my yard. You can go to them anytime that it's hot outside and it's been kind of dry weather and they'll just be all over these things. And I live relatively close to a lake, like it's less than 200 feet, three sides of my property to the lake. But they'll always go to the closest spot. Now one thing I've noticed is kind of an experiment I've got another tray over here that's just got water in it with some wood planks so they don't drown they very seldom go to it they always go to the ones with the plants in them the weeds I call them plants because I'm kind of like intentionally growing weeds but um they always go to the one with the weeds now it doesn't mean they don't don't go to that one you'll see that one there's a bee that just landed on those cups those wood things in those cups are to keep the bees from drowning they'll go to that but look at how many bees is over here compared to there i mean they're just everywhere slurping up that water slurping up the water i've got these are actually out of my uh front patio where I've got a bunch of lemons and limes and banana trees and all kinds of other stuff I'm growing but I come out here and I sit in a chair over there <laughs> and I watch them <laughs> it's interesting anyways thanks for watching y'all